Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. I'm going to um, do a short video. This is not going to be very long, but just a couple of things that I wanted to uh, put on the internet at the moment. Uh, a couple of more things I want. I have some more videos to do, but um, this is the one I'm going to do first, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to sing this. Ding dong, the witch is dead, witch old witch, the wicked witch. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Wake up, you sleepy heads, rub your eyes, get out of bed. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. She's gone where the goblins go, below, below, below your ho. Let's open up and sing and ring the bells out. Ding dong, the merry yo. Sing it high, sing it low. Let them know the wicked witch is dead. <laughs> you wonder why I sang that? Well, that's what's been going through my head all morning. Um, after I spoke to the Lord this morning, all of a sudden this song popped into my head. And I didn't know why. I still don't know why. I, obviously, I think there's something going on, but I'm putting it out there. Sometimes the Holy Spirit gives us strange little messages or messages that don't seem to make a lot of sense to us personally, but they have spiritual implications. In this case, I think there's a spiritual implication of some sort. Um, the Wicked Witch. Where we find witch? Where we find witchcraft in the Bible as a spirit of rebellion? Perhaps uh, the Lord is saying to me that the church has, has um, the spirit of rebellion in the church has been broken. Let me see if I can find that verse for you, actually. Let me first re read this first. This is from Galatians 5, verses uh, 19 to, well, on till I finish. I'm just, I'm just going to read this. Now, the works of the flesh, this is verses, Galatians 5, 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, rev revelings, and such like of the which I told you tell you before, and as I've also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provo provoking one another envying one another. Okay, also I wanted to go back to um, this one here where um, 1 Samuel 15, 15, 23, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. That was, uh, that was Samuel talking to Saul. So the spirit of witchcraft is rebellion. Rebellion is as the spirit of witchcraft. So anyway, I got that word this morning. That, that song popped into my head and just wouldn't leave me alone. So I guess the Lord is trying to tell me to put a, make a message on it. That the, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. I don't know whether that's specifically for the church or someone out there uh, in the world who is uh, uh, using their witchcraft. So, But I have a feeling it's a more of a bigger picture that something big has just happened um a couple of other things i wanted to bring up um i've been looking into this flat earth um, theory that's been going on and i have to tell you um at first i found it a little disturbing but then i thought you know whatever it is whether the world's a globe or flat i'm going to tell you one thing god's still in control <laughs> God is still in control. We don't have to worry, really worry whether it's flat around. The world still functions and it still works because God is in control. However, I have to admit that listening to a lot of these um, flat earth uh, uh, videos, they're, they're making a lot of points that I had actually myself have thought of. Not a lot, but there are some things that I had thought and thought to myself, well, this doesn't make sense or that doesn't make sense. And there are actually, there's people out there who are actually voicing what I always had always questioned. And, uh, and it's one of those things that, you know, it, just because you've heard something your whole life doesn't make it true. As we all know, Satan has been deceiving mankind since the very beginning, since the Garden of Eden. When man first encountered him, he has been deceiving us and lying to us. And his lies are always the same. Um, so anyway, there's just, uh, you know, I, I, 
I'm thinking that they've got some valid points, some really, really valid points. And one of the ones I really wanted to bring up that I had always thought was kind of curious um, was plane travel. Because I, I was used to think, well, I used to fly up quite a bit, not quite a bit, you know, off to, a few times to Toronto. And I've never enjoyed pl plane tra travel. I've never enjoyed it. I was can't wait to get back on the ground um, as soon as possible. But what used to disturb me, and I never voice it, but it used to disturb me, was I knew that knowing that the earth is, tr is turning east to west, and or so they say that the earth is turning east to west, why is it that it takes almost as much time to get to Toronto or as much time to get back to Vancouver from Toronto as it is to go to Toronto from Vancouver? You know what I'm saying? It almost takes just as much amount of time. I would think if since the world is turning east that it would take, well, more time to get to Toronto and less time to get back to Vancouver. In fact, all I, was, I used to think all you'd have to do is get up in the air and, and hover because if the world is turning, all you'd have to do is hover and wait for the world to catch up. But for some strange reason, it always takes the same amount, of, almost the exact same amount of time to get to Toronto as it does to get back to Vancouver. And that never really made a lot of sense to me, but I never voiced it. And so now that I've listened to these, some of these, these theories about the flat earth, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, they've got some valid points because someone else voiced the same thing. They were talking about plane travel and, and how very impossible it would be for a plane to, tr uh, to land if the earth is spinning in certain directions that the runway is in certain directions and also uh, if the world is turning at a thousand miles an hour then how is it a plane that's only traveling 500 miles an hour able to get to its destination if it's traveling east uh, you'd think that there would be no way for the earth the, the plane to actually travel with the <laughs> to travel in a, a shorter speed to be able to catch up to its destination anyway just something that i used to think about but now that I'm looking at the other people actually questioning the same thing it makes me feel a little less silly for actually having thought about these things. Another thing that used to bother me, and I, <laughs> even just recently looking up into the sky, looking at the moon and the sun, thinking to myself, why is it that both the sun and the moon can be in, in the sky and the, the moon can be in certain phases, not full, maybe full moon, quarter moon, partial sliver, whatever, and you can see both of them in the sky, and yet how is it that this earth is actually supposed to be casting a shadow on the on the moon if you can see both of them in the sky at the same time? Obviously, the earth is not between the moon and the sun, so how can the earth be casting a shadow on the moon to cause it to have a phase? Another thing that I used to question and used to wonder, how in the world is that working? But you never question. Interesting. Um, anyway, just, uh, just some things that had... You know, it's nice to know that I'm not the only one who's got some doubts about some some of these things that they've been telling us our, our, all our lives that that we haven't really haven't got the full answers to. And uh, like I said, lies and deceptions. Obviously, there's some some deceptions going on here that need to be looked into. And I'm I'm thankful that there are people who are more knowledgeable than I who are looking into them. But they're raising some really interesting points. Anyway, look into it. Um, Believe it or not, it doesn't really matter to your te you to your salvation as long as you believe in Jesus Christ. It'll all work out in the end in this case, whether it's flat, whether it's round. But, you know, like they said, the horizon thing, the flat horizon and being able to see Chicago 60 miles away from a certain point, that, that to me is pretty uh, interesting. Anyway, look into it. Um, also, I, I wanted to just point out that I'm going to be having to make some more videos on my testimony. The Lord has really been pushing me, party prodding me, <laughs> prodding me to make more videos on some um, uh, my testimony again, to go over my testimony and to add a couple of details which I have uh, left off because of their extremely controversial nature and um, because uh, they're really rather uh, uh, controversial, <laughs> um, shocking. But I'm going to uh, going to have to go back over my testimony. So those who have not heard my testimony, you'll get to hear it practically in full. I'll try to hone it down, but I don't think it's going to be possible. It's going to be very difficult to do, especially, you know, since I, I've been giving my testimony pretty much throughout all um, my YouTube channel time, which is in the last few years. But um, 
but I'm going to have to, the Lord has been really wanting me to do this. And so I'm <laughs> going to pray about it some more and try to get some, some encouragement to do just what I, uh, the Lord wants me to do. Um, but I, I think it's important because I actually was listening to someone. Let me see if I can find it here. I'm sorry. Um, somebody pointed out something in their video and all of a sudden it occurred to me that I, that's, this is the reason I have to do it. And that is in Revelations. Let me see if I can find the right verse. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, people, for having to stop here in the middle of this. I'm almost done with my video here, but something about um, overcoming overcoming Satan with their testimony. Let me see if I can just find it quickly. Sorry about that. I wasn't really planning on reading this. Reading this uh, verse. But since I'm thinking about it. Testimonies are actually, there's quite a few references to the word testimony. Uh, we It's important for Christians to have a testimony. I think that there's too many people on YouTube that you, they're, they're, they're teaching, they're this is not that and the other thing. They're telling us things, they're prophesying, but they have no testimony. Um, testimony, there's several, I mean, there's 70 plus word just for the word testimony alone, that the Lord he wants us to have a testimony. It's part of our witness, and it's also part of our works to have a testimony. It's part of our faith. Um, For instance, here, 2 Corinthians 1, 12, for our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that the, in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our, we have had our conversation, our conversations in the world and more abundantly to you, Ward. So testimony is important. It's, it's, it's there. Um, oh, 2 Timothy 1, 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Um, um, Hebrews 3, 5, And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken after by Christ as a son over his own house. So Christ is going to have his own kingdom, his own house, which is important to know. Um, the one I wanted to go to, uh, Revelations 1, 2, who bore record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and all things that he saw. So he's talking about John there. Um, oh, here it is. Um, and when he had opened the fifth seal, this is Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. <clears throat> um, oh, here it is. Revelations 12, 11. That's the one I wanted to go to. Um, okay, so this is Revelations 12. This is talking about the woman in heaven who has a child. She has a child in heaven. And she is the woman who is the overcomer. She's clothed with the sun and the moon is under her feet. I said this in one of my other videos where the woman who's clothed with the sun, the sun, the sun here is spelled S-U-N, but we can also assume that this woman is clothed in the sun, S-O-N. Um, and the foot, moon under her feet is a, a, a sign of her being a, a, the overcomer. She, The moon represents the feminine nature. Um, she is standing on the moon. She is overcome. The, the the sin nature she's overcome the, the sins of Eve you know the, the being beguiled being fooled deceived um, which is what the church is overcoming right now the church is being having to learn to overcome the deceptions of Satan um, this is the one this woman is the church this woman is the bride of Christ and she has overcome she's clothed in the sun she's on, she's standing on the moon meaning she has overcome. Um, but she also is going to bear a child, and she bears the child in heaven. She's crowned with 12 stars, which is the, um, um, the, the, the Gospels and the words of the Apostles, so the 12 stars. <clears throat> anyway, she gives birth, and she's, she gives birth in heaven. That's where she gives birth. But I wanted to go down to um, 
then this other wonder, which is Satan in heaven, uh, in the heavenly places, tries to overcome her and <clears throat> cast down uh, the third of the stars to the heaven. And he's not able to overcome her. He cannot overcome her, um, which is true. The bride, she, she defeats Satan. Um, that which is the church, she over she overcomes Satan, and she gives birth to this son, and she her son is caught up to the throne room of God, and she is taken away to the wilderness. But the where I wanted to go to was this war. This war, okay, now Michael goes to war with Satan and casts him down to the earth, and it's woe to the earth. <clears throat> now, let's go to verse uh, 10 of Revelation chapter 12. Now I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our, accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. That's us. We're the ones rejoicing. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, and having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. So this is the beginning, basically, of the tribulation of the earth. The, the bride has been taken to heaven. She gives birth. Um <clears throat> Now, there is a, what's interesting I find here, right here, I just want to point out something here. The devil is cast down <clears throat> to the earth, and the Antichrist is revealed after three and a half years of the testimony of the two witnesses. But that's a little further in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> not too long after, long, not long after the Revelation 12, the two witnesses show up. <clears throat> but anyway, it says here, um, um, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. I think that's kind of curious. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. And what that means, it means exactly, I'm not sure, but we'll soon find out. But anyway, I just wanted to, to point out all this to say, point out that testimony is important because we overcome the devil by the blood of Christ, by being in Christ, but by also by our testimony. So the Lord gives us each personally testimony. That testimony gives us faith that to overcome Satan. Now, I like I said, I have I have quite a bit of a testimony. I have a lot of testimony, and I I have shared with it, you um, on a lot of occasions some of my testimony, most of my testimony, different things that I've how I've overcome Satan in different areas of my life. Um, but there is some details of my testimony that I have left out because I felt you were not ready to hear it. I wasn't ready to give it. And uh, I think it's important because it's part of my testimony and it's part of how I overcome Satan, how I am to overcome Satan by my testimony. Um, and I just wanted to say one more time that just because you've heard something your whole life doesn't make it true. What makes something true is if it's in the Word, if Christ has said it, if we, if it, if there's some example of it in the Scripture, God gives us the truth, and the truth sets us free. I guess in a way like this flat Earth thing, you know, if the Earth is indeed flat, then that truth will set us free. Um, I just think that there's some, there's some interesting um, things we. We have to learn to be as truthful as possible with each other and uh, because Satan uses lies and deceptions. Those are the seeds of Satan. He, he wants us to fall into his category or his ways because he's the father of lies. So he wants his children to be liars. <laughs> and uh, God wants us to be children of Christ, to children of God, sons and daughters of God, um, and the bride of Christ. And that means that Christ gave us the truth. He told us the truth. And he wants us also to be truthful and to seek truth because it sets us free. It sets us free from bondage. It sets us free from domination of, of Satan and his minions. Um, it gives us more knowledge. It helps us to overcome. It helps us to, to grow. If you have the truth, then you, if, I mean, if the truth of science was told us all, 
we there would be no end to what we could accomplish because we could see the possibilities and the limitations. We could do what we needed to do. But as long as we're kept in a in a, in a, in a bubble of knowledge that we can't get beyond it because of the lies that have been told us all our whole lives or for thousands of years, um, it's hindering us in our progress. And of course, that's what Satan wants. He wants us to be hindered in all ways. So in my case, I think I need to finish my testimony. I need to get this out and uh, so that not just myself, but all, all of us can be freer in our knowledge towards God. Anyway, I know I'm rambling and I didn't expect this video to go on as long as this, but I will try. Please say a prayer for me. Um, but just remember the wicked witch is dead. <laughs> the spirit of rebellion is dead. Okay, so God bless you and I'll talk to you later.